Dragon Ball Sparking Zero released in 2024, runs on the Unreal Engine 5, and these are the game's minimum system requirements. So today, we're going to see how much performance we can squeeze out of this game to achieve maximum performance on low-end machines. So let's dive right in. First, I'm going to run the game using my integrated graphics. First, I've set the screen resolution to 1080p and the resolution scaler to 50%, which is the lowest allowed. V-Sync is off, and all other graphic settings are at their lowest preset. One downside of this game is that it's capped at 60 FPS, so no matter how powerful your hardware is, you can't go above 60 FPS. But don't worry, I know a way to uncap the FPS, and I'll show you how later in the video. Well, the game is still somewhat playable, but if you're experiencing low FPS or frequent stuttering, don't worry, stick with me until the end of this video, because I'll be showing you some hidden graphical tweaks that will help you achieve the best possible performance on any PC. So now let's exit the game and dive into what we need to do to improve its performance. The configuration file of this game is located in your hidden app data folder. Navigate to local, sparking zero folder, saved, config, and then in the windows folder. Now first you need to open the game user settings file with notepad. We'll start by looking at the scalability group section. This key here, it controls the resolution scalar of the game. But since the game doesn't allow values lower than 50%, and even if you manually set a custom value, it will automatically reset to 50%. So there's no point in changing it here. However, I know a way to bypass this limit and adjust the resolution scalar to whatever you want. And I'll show you how in just a bit. So stick around. Now change these relevant values to zero in order to boost FPS. Now this keys here, they controls the screen resolution of the game and I'm sticking with 1080p, but feel free to lower it further for an extra performance boost. After making these changes, save the file and make sure to set the file's attributes to read only to prevent the game from resetting your changes. Now let's move on to the next set of tweaks. Now open the engine file, which is located in the same game configuration folder. After opening it, simply paste the variables I've provided to uncap the 60 FPS limit, allowing the game to run at more than 60 FPS. Don't worry, you can find all the necessary variables in the video description. Once you've done this, save the file and again set the file's attributes to read only to lock in the changes. Now let's reopen the game for further tweaks. For further tweaking, you'll need to download the Unreal Engine 5 Unlocker tool, which will allow us to enable in-game console and make advanced graphical tweaks. The download link is in the video description. After downloading, extract the zip file and launch the application with administrator rights. Make sure you're either in the game menu screen or the playable part of the game before running the tool. Now go here and select the game process, then choose the Universal UE5 Unlocker DLL file. Finally hit inject DLL. Once that's done, let's get back into the game. To tweak the game further, open the console by pressing the tilde key on your keyboard. First, I'll change the screen resolution to 960 by 540 p Don't worry, all the commands and tool I'm using will be available in the video description, so be sure to check that out. You can also experiment with custom resolution scalar values by entering this variable and setting your preferred value. For example, this is how it looks at 10%, but I'll change it back to 50%. As a reminder, we previously adjusted some SG graphical quality settings to zero, but unfortunately, these reset each time we launch the game, so we'll need to address this through the console as well. Additionally, let's input a few more variables to further boost performance. Now, if you want to enable potato graphics in the game, then simply write this variable and set its value to a higher number like 10. And yeah, if you don't want to redo these configurations every time you launch the game, you can just paste all the variables into the engine file. Check the description for more details. So now let's test the game one last time. Well, now the game is pretty much playable on my PC, and when I'm not recording my screen, I'm getting around 95 to 100 FPS. So guys, that's it for today's video. 
If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share this video with your low-spec friends so they can also enjoy playing Dragon Ball Sparking Zero on their low-end machines. And I'll see you all again in the next video. So, until then, take care and bye. Let me show you my full strength! Not good! Behind you! Oh.